Well, this morning, President Biden will address leaders from around the world as part of the second summit for democracy. Organizers say these officials will discuss ways to tackle challenges to democracy during the two-day event. Costa Rica, the Netherlands, South Korea, and Zambia are co-hosting along with the U.S. The CBS News senior White House correspondent Weijia Jang is at the White House with more on this. So Weijia, um, they're going to be bragging about the accomplishments uh, from the last summit like this. What are they likely to be focusing on and touting? Well, President Biden himself is expected to make remarks later this morning, and he will be talking about the $690 million secured for programs around the globe to try to bolster uh, democracy. And we know that there are 120 countries invited to this summit. Um, as you mentioned, there are different uh, partners this time along with the U.S. So there's going to be a lot of robust discussions, I think, about what each country is focused on. Uh, maybe lawn care <laughs> here in the White House. You know the drill. This yes, I do. The time. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is a really important event for President Biden because it's something he talked about even as a candidate to preserve democracy. You can see here some of those other partners um, and their goals for this summit. Costa Rica wants to discuss the role of youth in democratic systems. Uh, the Dutch would like to talk about media freedom. South Korea, the fight against corruption. Uh, Zambia, free and fair elections. And the U.S. advancing technology. In fact, I think that will be the main point of the president's speech when he does talk um, formally to talk about how, you know, the globe, how uh, countries can use technology as a benefit and not um, in a way that is detrimental to the public around the world. This is something he's talked about in other contexts as well. Um, and certainly we should expect that he will talk about uh, the Russian war in Ukraine, mm -hmm. uh, because of course he has mentioned a lot of these points um, along the way, saying that this is not just about Ukraine, but the war really is about showing autocracies uh, like Russia that democracies will not be dismantled easily. And of course, the president's going to be pretty busy today because he's also hosting the president of Argentina at the White House. Now, if I recall last year during the uh, Summit of the Americas, it, it was the president of Argentina that was kind of openly critical about the fact that the U.S. did not invite certain countries to that summit, Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua. Um, how is the relationship now and uh, what is the purpose of this meeting? Well, the real purpose of this meeting is for the um, Argentinian president to talk about uh, the rules for the international uh, financial funds that he would like to be changed in order to access uh, more money because his country is going through a lot right now when it comes to, uh, for example, he mentioned a drought that is creating difficult circumstances for the people who live here. But you bring up a really important point, Emory, because he was vocal along with other uh, leaders that, you know, didn't understand why some countries were not invited. Um, but the president, the White House has made very clear that for those countries that you know, do, not, um, do not practice human rights, uh, that violate human rights, in fact, um, they, they will not be included in these types of conversations. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is something that the president will reiterate. But I think that the talks will focus on finances, especially um, as in the backdrop, we are still talking about the banking system and how that could impact the global econ economy. Yeah, speaking of the economy, just quickly before I let you go, some domestic issues here. What is the status of the debt ceiling agreement? I mean, when we were talking about it a few months ago, it seemed like summer was a long way away, but now we're in the springtime. So a couple months ago when President Biden met with um, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy about uh, the budget, about the debt ceiling, you know, both parties left and seemed optimistic to your point, Anne-Marie, um, that they would continue talks and uh, perhaps find some sort of compromise. But they haven't been in touch at all. In fact, this week, uh, McCarthy sent a very public letter to the president demanding, essentially, that they talk and resume negotiations. But the White House and the president has not changed their tune. They are saying that they want to see the Republicans' budget first before any further talks. Mm -hmm. They want the Republicans to show their cards because the Republicans, of course, are asking for uh, or demanding, I should say, uh, cuts 
in the budget. And so they want all the cards out on the table. The president released his budget. Now they're asking for McCarthy to do the same before they talk about the debt ceiling, which, by the way, um, the president insists is a very separate conversation from any budget negotiations. But still, since that is what the Republicans are hanging their hat on, he said you might as well make it transparent. So to answer your question, Emory, not much is happening with negotiations because um, nobody so far is giving in to the other side. All right, we just, I feel like that guy's mowing the same patch of grass over and over again. Like, isn't there another section of the lawn he's got to get to? <laughs> we just, thank you so much. He wants some air time. Can't <laughs> Clearly. <play them. laughs>